From this Sunday's readings, we are provided rich lessons for our salvation. From our Lord, we learn the kingdom of heaven comes at a cost. Our salvation, our entrance into heaven is not free. Being from White Bear Lake, I'm formed and raised in Minnesota nice. Being formed and raised in that Minnesota nice, I prefer to keep quiet to avoid raising the topic of judgment. But as a Christian, as another Christ, here as a spiritual father, I need to put my preferences to the side. As soon as one picks up the Gospels, I mean not simply going to a familiar or favorite verse, but delving into the Gospels, reading them through, we find out that Christ is not Minnesota nice. He is divine love. Last Sunday, remember the parable, Christ made clear, there will be a harvest. This is not our permanent home. Again, these were the words. At the end of the age, the Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin and all evildoers. They will throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. But the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father, Whoever has ears ought to hear. This week, another parable. And once again, Christ makes this clear. There will be a separation. You just heard his words. At the end of the age, the angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous. And throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Do these words sound Minnesota nice? Again, my preference, probably for most, our preference would be to brush over these words or words like them from our Lord. Or to find a way to explain them away. But that would be dangerous. Potentially a fatal mistake. An eternal mistake. This is the divine word of our God. Going off our first reading, invite us to consider if during the night, think this very night, the Lord appeared to you, the Lord came to you and said, ask something of me and I will give it to you. What would you ask for? A long life, riches, perhaps a long life for your kids or grandkids. But how many of us would ask for vision, clear vision, how to act, how to be righteous in the sight of God, how to avoid wickedness, how to distinguish right from wrong, not just for ourselves, but for those entrusted to our care. This is what Solomon asks for. A wise and understanding heart 
and God praises him. All of us, we might consider asking the Lord for a wise and understanding heart, especially those of us with others entrusted to our care. Those of us who have spouses, who have kids, who have grandkids, to be able to distinguish right from wrong, not just for us, but for those entrusted to our care. Solomon, he had an entire kingdom to care for. Many of us have a family, spouse, and kids to care for, let alone our own souls. I myself, I've Mention my trembling, having two parishes trusted to my spiritual care. And all of us, all of us will be judged. The kingdom comes at a cost, and for us, the cost is righteousness. How about for our Lord? What did the kingdom cost our God? The beginning of the parable, we hear, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. I wonder if we think about or remember why at the center of our church And at the center of every Catholic church, is there a man dead hanging on a cross? Imagine someone who had never heard of Jesus, never met a Christian, never stepped into a church, somehow arrived here in our church, wandered into this place, and they were greeted by this crucifix, wouldn't it seem strange? Wouldn't they think, why isn't that covered? Why isn't that hidden? Why isn't that taken away? Because it is divine love. It is the King of heaven. It is the person, the Savior, who counted you and me as treasure. We are treasure without a value that can be placed. For our Lord, we are treasure buried in the world of sin. But out of joy, our Lord, he comes He sells everything he has, his comfortable seat next to our Father in heaven, and he sheds his blood, giving all that he has to buy you and me. To him, our Lord and King, we are treasure. We are pearls of great price that our King gives everything to ransom the price of his own blood. What is the cost of heaven? For you and me, it's righteousness. For him, everything. How good, how good is our God?